very excited to be here with so many friends and activists and community leaders to make an announcement of something that will really be groundbreaking and something that community members have been fighting for for a very, very long time. Um, I am proud to be joined today by our uh, Chief of Streets, Yasha Franklin Hodge, by our General Manager of the MBTA, Steve Poftak, by members of our city team from the transportation department to neighborhood services to our civic and community engagement cabinet, uh, our comms team, of course. Thank you all so much for being here. Uh, we are here to announce that the three bus routes that the city of Boston has been working on and working in collaboration with the MBTA on, the 23, the 28, and the 29, will be fare free to residents for two years starting in March. A lot has taken place to get us to this point. I especially want to recognize the efforts of so many in city government for many years. I remember it wasn't too long ago that many of us were gathered at the FMCB board meeting calling for relief from fare hikes. And it wasn't too long ago that Mayor Janey announced that she had worked to start a pilot of the 28 bus in this past August to show just how much is possible when we take down barriers for people. We've also had advocacy and leadership from our partners at the state and at the federal level. And so I'm especially grateful to Congresswoman Presley, who has been a champion for fare free transit as well. And she has led and created the transportation, Future of Transportation Caucus up, at, uh, up in Congress. And she and Senator Markey filed legislation at the federal level to ensure that funding would be available for fare free public transportation. We've also had partners at the state file legislation to specifically make bus service free statewide and to recognize that the benefits of such would far, far outweigh the costs. We know that public transit is a public good and it should be funded that way. It is true. It has been true, and, and I'm so grateful to colleagues in government who have fought for this, for anyone who has rallied with us to fight fare hikes, for anyone who has worried about how to afford food or rent or how to make ends meet because transportation is just yet another cost in that family budget. Today, we are excited to have plans to show just how much we can make a difference in taking those barriers down. Transportation is about connectedness at the end of the day, connecting us to healthcare, to education, to jobs, and to each other. It is the single fastest way that we can achieve our goals when it comes to all of what we're talking about in the city of Boston, from equity and economic mobility, to our climate justice goals, to our public health goals of reducing asthma and reducing exposure to pollution in our neighborhoods, easing traffic and congestion. We know that bus service is the best place to start because it is speeding up our buses every time we make it so that people don't have to wait in line, uncrinkle those dollar bills, or rumble, go through, rummage through bags to get out that pass to pay. We have seen it work during the pandemic, and we've seen it work on the 28 bus. Uh, one last thing before I pass it on to someone who is incredibly special, who can really speak to the impacts of this. I just want to note how these three routes in particular connect to the city's plans in partnership with, with state and federal government for Blue Hill Ave to be a transformational economic corridor in the city of Boston. We are looking to really have a design led by community that would ensure our buses move in a, in a fast and reliable way along this route. And the, the three routes all connect to Blue Hill Ave to make sure that people can get to their schools, the YMCA, churches, Boys and Girls Club, universities, and restaurants and small businesses along the way. Thank you especially to our uh, federal delegation, Congresswoman Presley and Congressman Lynch, who secured a, a raise grant for Boston to be able to apply to the Blue Hill Ave redesign project as well. Okay, in español, el año pasado, la alcaldesa Kim Janey lanzó el piloto de autobús 28 gratis para la comunidad. Aumentó el número de pasajeros de y la línea se hizo más eficiente, 
comprobó que el tránsito sin tarifa no solo es posible, sino también es efectivo para todos. Estoy muy emocionado hoy de anunciar que empezando el primero de marzo, los autobuses en las líneas 23, 28 y 29 serán gratis por dos años. Sí. Gracias a la congresista Presley y al senador Markey por ayudar con asegurar los recursos federales necesarios y también al Consejo Municipal para aprobar estos, estos fondos. Las rutas gratuitas justo a tiempo para las mejoras, la avenida Blue Hill, y gracias al, al congresista Presley y al congresista Lynch para asegurar recursos en el Raise Grant. Con, somos, todos nosotros se, somos parte de una comunidad conectada por no solamente las luchas de vivienda, necesitamos uh, viviendas asequibles, necesitamos el aire uh, pura, necesitamos acceso al, a la educación, al uh, trabajo. La conexión entre todos es al acceso al transporte. Entonces, a la salud, educación, oportunidades económicas y nosotros, seres queridos, construir una ciudad mejor para todos significa eliminar las barreras en esas conexiones. Entonces, gracias a todos. And I'd like to pass it on to Miss Peggy, who is a 28 bus rider and um, is someone who inspires me so much. Hello, everybody. I am an avid 28 rider. I live in Mattapan, and I'm also a senior citizen. And this bus route, being free, gives me the opportunity to do my grocery shopping, my laundry, uh, my gym activity, which is my therapy for my disabilities. It is so important. And for it to be free, it's just a gift that keeps giving. When I get on the bus, nowadays with free bus, Everybody gets on, they're calm, there's no hassle, there's no aggravation about having to stand in line, wait for somebody with money to come on or a bus. Just little teeny things that can piss or turn a person's day a little sour, you know, and they end up giving it back to you. But this is one of the best things that has happened in the city. And I think that to be able to feel appreciated, because I still have a bus pass and I still go other places. But this is my vital one, the one that I have to go to. You know, my drugstore, everything is here that I do. And I just absolutely love it. And thank you to Kim Shady, Mayor Wu, Lynch, everybody for making this happen for us. It's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful thing, an absolutely wonderful thing. Next up, our Chief of Streets, Yasha Franklin Hutt. Uh, thank you, Mayor Wu, and uh, good morning, everyone. So I'm Yasha Franklin Hodge, Chief of Streets for the City, and as the Mayor said, uh, I'm excited that uh, we're here today to announce that starting March 1st, the 23, 28, and 29 bus routes uh, will be free for two years. Uh, you can hop on any door, no bills, no Charlie card. Uh, anyone can ride these lines for free uh, starting in March. This pilot program is going to be one of the longest running free fare pilots anywhere in the country and one of the only ones that's centered around uh, improving equitable transportation in the selection of the routes that are included in the program. Uh, as Mayor Wu said, the path to get here has taken work and support from many people, both inside and outside government. Uh, a special thank you to my team at the Boston Transportation Department who's worked uh, long and hard on uh, making this happen. Um, I'm grateful to everyone who has played a role in bringing us to where we are today in this moment and for setting the stage for what uh, is to come uh, after this pilot. Uh, the path to get here would not have happened without the vision and the sustained leadership of then Councilor, now Mayor Wu, who was able to, to, to really think and see how free fares could change the relationship that we have with public transit and change the way that we get around the city. As the Mayor said, Public transit is a public good, and just like all of the other public goods that bring so much to our lives, our parks, our libraries, our schools, 
we believe that the bus will deliver the most to the most people when it is freely available to all. Free buses provide benefits, as we've heard, to the people who ride them, but they also send a message. It sends the message that this bus is for you, it's for me, it's for anyone who wants to get where they're trying to go. But let's talk a little bit about the benefits, uh, more specifically, of the free bus. Free fares put money back into people's pockets and time back into their day. They simplify the experience of riding the bus, and they make it more convenient for the kinds of quick trips that people sometimes want to take. Free fares bring benefits to the operation of the bus as well. During the six months where we've operated a, a free fare pilot on the Route 28 bus, we've seen a 20% reduction in boarding times for people getting on the bus. Um, they can use all the doors. There's no time spent making fare payment. When you add up that 20%, stop after stop, it improves the rider experience, but it also can help the bus stay on schedule and potentially can improve the overall reliability of the service and the system. We'll be releasing a detailed evaluation of uh, this fare-free pilot, the first phase of this pilot, the first six months and the next couple of weeks. Uh, so stay tuned for lots of uh, interesting facts and, and insights coming out of that. But the bottom line is this, free fares work. Uh, since uh, fares uh, came off the 28 bus in August of last year, we've seen ridership surge to over 90% of pre-pandemic levels, almost 12,000 riders a day, and that makes the 28 the most popular line in the system. Uh, in addition to the benefits of free fares, the 29 bus under this program will also gain from the newly built center running bus lanes along Columbus Ave uh, and the platforms that allow uh, riders to have a more comfortable uh, riding experience. Working with the neighborhoods, as the mayor said, the city is going to continue to build new bus lanes, uh, improved boarding areas, traffic signals that provide priority to transit so that the bus can move people quickly and efficiently where they need to go. Uh, all of this, the, you know, this, this idea of fare-free transit is, is, is rooted in a vision, and it's a, it's a larger vision for what our, what our streets and what our transportation system can be. Uh, it's a vision of a city where everyone has access to affordable, convenient, uh, and reliable transportation options, where fewer people are burdened by high transportation costs. It's a vision of commutes that take less time away from family and from jobs, where our roads are designed to move people, not just cars, and where driving a car in traffic is a choice, not the only reasonable option that people have. It's a vision of no matter who you are, uh, that you won't think twice about hopping on the bus to get where you need to go because you know that it's going to be dependable, convenient, and free. There's a lot of work ahead, uh, state, uh, local, federal. Uh, today's announcement is to start down a path, uh, and we have a lot of building that we need to do to get towards that future. Yep, I am. Well, <laughs> just trying to keep myself organized. Um, so before I hand it over to General Manager Poftek, uh, I want to express my appreciation to him uh, and his team at the MBTA. Uh, you know, they've been willing partners in this project, and it's, uh, it's no small thing uh, when you go to any organization, a business or a government, and say, you know, we want to take the, the service you provide and we want to make it free. Um, but they've been, uh, they've been willing partners in, in working through the complexities of this, including uh, some of the regulatory uh, challenges with folks in D.C., and very grateful for the, uh, for the work of you and your team. This two-year pilot is a time to learn, uh, to learn about the ways that free fares benefit riders, the ways they connect communities, the way they improve operations of the bus. It's also a time to learn about how we're going to the best ways to provide long-term funding to the essential public service that is the public bus. So with that, uh, thank you all for being here, and I will turn it over now to General Manager Steve Poftak from the T. Thanks to all of you for being here this morning. I Particularly, I want to return the thanks to both Mayor Wu and Chief of Streets Yasha Franklin Hodge for their collaboration on this. I want to thank everyone at BTD uh, who did such a wonderful job collaborating with our team as we worked through some of the complexities of getting to this point. 
We're really pleased to collaborate with the city. We were pleased to collaborate on the original Route 28 pilot and now to expand this program to include these additional routes for the next two years. Customers who've received the benefits on the 28 will now continue to receive those benefits and we've expanded to a, a, an additional two routes. And you know, to be clear and to give credit where credit is due, we very much appreciate the City of Boston's willingness to make this happen by providing the funding to replace the fares that are not going to be collected for the next two years. And you know, I want to emphasize that this partnership doesn't just stop here. This is a really exciting time for our bus customers and for bus customers to really realize the full benefit of what we want to offer, we need municipal partners. And we have that partner with the great team here at the City of Boston. We're advancing plans to rebuild our bus facilities, which are the, is really the critical next step in electrifying our bus fleets. Two weeks, two weeks ago, uh, we at the T put up the funding to begin the design of the Arbor Way bus, bus yard. And we look forward to working with the city to make that a reality. So I know a bus yard sounds mundane, sounds boring, but it's the critical next step into, in electrifying our bus fleet. A redesigned Arbor Way yard will go from 119 buses to 200 zero emission battery electric buses. That will mean 40% of the city's bus routes, including the Route 28, will be served by battery electric buses. This is great news for our communities, it's great news for our commuters, it's great news for the environment. We're also, also two weeks ago, we put up $5 million uh, as a contribution to, to the, the design and the development of the, the uh, dedicated bus lane that we are, we are looking forward to working with the community on and working with the city on as we advance that concept on Blue Hill Ave. But the T is here. We are putting money on the table to get these important bus infrastructure changes made. And we look forward to continuing to invest in better bus service and transit vehicle priority across the system alongside our partners at the city. And we look forward to working with all of our great municipal partners, like our friends here in Boston, to deliver a bus system, the bus system that our riders deserve. Thanks again for joining and look forward to working with this great team going forward. Thank you. There are many advocates who have played such a leadership role in this, and, and there are too many here to thank from Transit Matters and Livable Streets and ACE and so many others. So to speak on behalf of everyone who's been a partner on the community side, I'd like to invite up Ms. Mella Miles from Alternatives for Community and Environment. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here on this momentous day. Um, we have, for years, been... Um, tossing around the vision of free buses. And in that vision, we envisioned how you could reduce uh, the cost of transportation, not just for the person, but by reducing, uh, the, by changing over to free fares, you could um, not have, uh, there's no fare evasion. So there's a justice component in that. There's adding, you can't evade a fare if there is no fare. And there was a disproportionate number of African-American males who were being, and uh, males of color who were being cited for fare evasion in the past. So in the interest of social justice, free fares make a lot of sense. Also, we had a vision of free fares uh, for a sustainability reason uh, within the advocacy um, groups. Even the sustainability manager who used to work at the T, um, we had conversations during Boston Green Fest to think about how we could make the fares free. What would you save? That you wouldn't have to maintain the fare gates. I mean, you have fare gates, you count how many people get on, but you also would be able to not have to, all of the costs that were being um, poured into fare collection could be allocated somewhere else to make the tea safer, um, more efficient, more sustainable, you know, invested in electric buses and things like that. There was a, a 64 hours of people's lives, black people spend 64 more hours on their life, of their life per year uh, riding on public transit than white people. 
Now, that is something that was um, documented in a study and in research done by the Livable Streets Alliance, one of my um, groups that uh, we coalesce with. So we are going to add back more time into our life. When the bus moves more quickly, it has less what you call dwell time, sitting around waiting for people to feed money in, and what happens? It moves faster, it reduces the uh, greenhouse gas emissions of that vehicle. So we're really excited about this free bus pilot. We're also excited about the Arbor Yard and the electric buses that are coming along. We're working on that now, um, working to make sure that we have a clean, green, and affordable public transit system that is just and that works for all. So we say free the tea, we're really excited, and we're really excited about having worked with Mayor Wu on bringing this vision to pass, and we're, we're envisioning when all of the buses are free, not just the 23, 28, and 29, but this is a first step in that process. So we're really excited for the city of Boston, for the planet, and for the people, and I'm so glad to be here today on behalf of ACE Alternatives for Community and Environment, and the T Riders Union that I direct during Transit Equity Month that was proclaimed by Mayor Wu when she was then city councilor. So we're focusing on equity right now, and this is part of the process. So we're really excited. Thank you. And the the you know we're a couple of weeks out from being able to actually hop on the buses for free, but we wanted to come here today, and the real purpose is that we are going to visit some of the small businesses in Grove Hall and help spread the word. I've heard from many, many 28 bus riders that it took a little while for people to realize that this change was coming and small businesses were one of the best places where they got that information. So I'd like to invite up the director of the Grove Hall Main Streets, Ed Gaskin, who to tell us a little bit about what we're going to do next in terms of the walk, but also share any, any thoughts on behalf of the small businesses in the area. Well, thank you, Mayor. <laughs> That's very exciting. So um, just a couple words. First of all, I have to thank my transportation colleagues because they're the ones that made this plaza where we're standing possible with this whole redesign. And uh, what I would say very quickly, we appreciate Mayor Wu for taking the steps to make the ridership free and one of Boston's challenged economic hardship. This, uh, ac this action makes access to resources such as our COVID testing, which is at Prince Hall Masonic Lodge, or healthcare at the Harvard Street Health Center and Whittier Street, the grocery store, green space, which is available at the Franklin Park. Um, all this becomes more accessible because of the T, and hopefully increased ridership will play a small role in improving the air quality in the area because we have a significant number of people who have respiratory challenges and one of the goals of Greater Gulf Hall Main Streets was to make the area cleaner and greener and Mayor's Wu's actions is the first step to moving us closer to that. So thank you. And uh, now we're going to go uh, meet some of the businesses along this area. Uh, and I'm appreciative of the fact that you speak Spanish because we're going to have some Spanish speaking businesses. So thank you, Mayor. Does this lead to an entirely, or do I hope that this leads to an entirely free MBTA? Absolutely. We've been talking about that for a long, long time. Um, you know, we know that transportation and public transit in particular is the foundation of so much. It's life changing when we can remove that barrier for people. Of course, there are costs to account for, there are coordination and logistical details, but with this step of showing what's possible, we are already in communication with several other municipalities in the region as well, as they are looking to potentially start fare-free pilots as well. And so as we start to expand the number of routes, um, we'll be looking to our general manager <laughs> for, for support there. The original question was about um, I think there's some, you know, I think there's some important questions about funding that would need to be answered in the context. I mean, we view this as as a, a pilot. 
Uh, you know, the municipality, in this case Boston, has, has stepped up to fund it, and we are in the middle of a joint evaluation of it, and we will uh, we'll obviously we'll be evaluating not only the first, the first leg of it, but we'll evaluate this two-year leg that's, that's coming up. And, you know, we, we stand willing to, to cooperate with municipal partners who want to do this type of work. But I think, you know, there are some larger structural questions um, that I know the, the mayor has been, has been deeply involved in. And, uh, you know, we look forward to continuing that conversation. Are you two years not that long to find $8 million or however many million dollars uh, I mean, when do you have, when do you think you'll have a better idea? Uh, the question is what happens after two years and what about that funding? There's a lot of work and leadership happening from our state and federal partners. This will, to find that sustainable funding source, we will need partnership. We will need help from other levels of government as well. Uh, we are grateful to be able to apply some of the federal relief funds for the pandemic to this. It is a perfect use of it because these very communities were, some, were disproportionately impacted by every aspect of the pandemic. And so this is very much about pouring those resources back into recovery, back into our families' pockets, and, and into our small businesses as well. Um, there is legislation up at the state house and at, and at the federal level to talk about how to make this sustainable in the long run. Our numbers are reported weekly. Oh, sorry, I've been told to repeat the question for folks who are watching because they can't hear the, the questions being asked. So um, do we see any progress or signs for hope even since yesterday and the numbers coming down, getting closer to lifting some of the requirements? Um, it's trending in the right direction. Our numbers come in on a weekly basis, to, to, to and, and we look at a seven-day average. So we will see by next Tuesday uh, where we stand. Change is hard. Change can evoke a lot of emotion from many folks, but this is why we do it, because when city government takes action, we can do that quickly, we can work in partnership with community, and we can see progress on the issues that so many have been fighting for for so long. What do you plan to use to measure success for this pilot, and how, and, and how often do you plan to make data like on things like ridership or service improvements public so people can follow progress on this? Question on what metrics will we be watching for success and how often will we make this data transparent? I mean, I hope often, but I'll defer to Yasha. You stay there one aisle in apartment 10, he almost died up there. They put him in the mental hospital that the left for rehab, his ex wife is a payee, and they want they, he, he's a good dude. You look into it, because he wants to go home, spend his time at home, and he's going to lose his apartment. His name's Royal Matt. Okay, can you make, well, let's get your contact information. We'd love to check on him. Um, so to answer the question, I mean, I think that there is in the agreement that we've structured with the MBTA, there's sort of some formal evaluation steps uh, along the way uh, of, of looking at, you know, ridership, looking at bus performance, uh, looking at uh, just sort of the, the way that this does or does not impact demand on the system. Um, you know, we certainly saw with the 28 pilot that there was a, a significant increase in demand after free fares went into effect, and so we're going to be looking at all of that. Um, so we have some formal reporting steps. Uh, I believe that there is a uh, th that there'll be an interim annual report uh, in the middle of the two-year mark, and then a kind of wrap-up report at the end. Uh, a lot of data is already available on core MBTA uh, metrics, on ridership, uh, and in some cases on performance uh, of the bus itself. Uh, available via the MBTA and via some of the advocacy organizations like Transit Matters that collect and aggregate that data. Um, we're also going to be looking at 
the impact of this uh, as, be as best we can on residents and on the communities who are benefiting from this. Some of that is going to be quantitative, uh, trying to see if we can measure economic impact, whether it uh, has benefits to local businesses along these routes. Uh, some of it will be more qualitative and talking to people, understanding their experiences, understanding their perception of the bus, how it's changed. Uh, in one way or another uh, as a result of this program. So I think it's going to be an ongoing uh, set of evaluation, and we will be uh, happy and excited to, to talk about it and share more information uh, as we go through this process. Mayor, many of us were here, I think, when you announced this literally two weeks after your election, I think, we were in Dorchester as well. It's obviously taken a little bit to get here. There were some restrictions to the FTA. Can you talk about I know we're still talking about funding. What steps have you taken since that initial announcement to get to today? It's really been such a collaborative effort. And again, so much love to BTD and the MBTA and even our, our partners at the FTA and at the Secretary of Transportation's cabinet. I, can't, I, I haven't even been involved in a fraction of the conversations that have been ongoing, but uh, there was some question about what the length of the pilot could be. And again, very grateful that that could be resolved so we could have a longer pilot beyond six months. It will take time, one, for residents to know what's happening and to be able to build this into their daily lives, uh, two, for businesses to make decisions, and, and for three, for us to really see the impact of that across multiple seasons and multiple years. So it was really important that we could have that longer time frame, just like the city of Lawrence did. They have now gone past their first two-year pilot onto their next two years, and it's, it's been life-changing over there as well. Yeah, I mean, there's just so much potential and possibility. And at the end of the day, it is a, okay, Steve can cover his ears, but <laughs> it is a relatively small cost when you just look at the bus system, right? We are already subsidizing bus service so much with all of the need for fare collection and checking on this and that. The uh, advocacy community had really studied what it would look like to, to just replace fares coming from bus rides alone, and the estimates there were a little over $60 million statewide, about half of that for the MBTA system and half of that for all of the other regional transit authorities across the entire state of Massachusetts. So we know, you know, again, there are lots of considerations about the logistics of what that means for who's riding a bus versus who has a monthly pass across bus and subway and all of that. But this will help us understand that a bit more and think about what the most effective next steps would be.